Hey, yeah, what's up? This is Disciple Marcello Kearns, Rain, back up in this. So, this video right here is going to be about there is no perfect time for the world to end. There is no perfect time for the world to end. <clears throat> so, I'm going to come with a scripture just from the beginning. And I'm coming from Matthew, the 24th chapter, the 37th and 38th verse. So the 37th verse reads, but as in this is Christ, the master speaking his words, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So you see, right before the flood, they were doing everything. They were doing, they were, they were eat. It says it was, they were eating and drinking, marrying. So, so obviously the people felt comfortable. They felt uh, comfortable enough to start families by marrying. They were eating and drinking, so they wasn't distressed. They were prosperous, obviously, because they had food to eat and they had drink. So everything basically was normal. And, every, and, and it's safe to say if they were marrying, as Christ was saying, and giving, and giving in marriage, that they had plans for the future. That part. That's the most important part of it. As far as what I want to explain, um, you know, there there will be no perfect time. There is no perfect time for the end of the world. There's going to be people that have goals. They have they marrying. Uh, you think people that are married are getting married? Let's say this month, May 2022. You think there are people out there that are getting married that want um, that want the world to end? Of course not. Right here, Christ tells us that they're going to be eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. So everything is like, you know, good. You know, and 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 that's the state of the people now. Everyone um, is hostile towards the end of the world because you feel like you haven't. You want to, you got stuff you got to do. You got stuff you want to do. And, and unfortunately the end of the world still came the first time and it's going to come the second time, this time, whether you're giving into marriage, eating and drinking and chilling, it's still coming. So in other words, if you still have, if you have plans, that's irrelevant. There will all it will be no perfect time. So whatever, whenever the end of the world is coming, there's going to be people getting married. There's going to be people eating and drinking and enjoying their lives. Eating and drinking is a, a, a detection that they're enjoying their lives. OK, they're enjoying themselves. They're eating, they're treating themselves, they're eating and drinking. These days, people are treating themselves. You know, they're buying them some food, buying them, you know, some pizza, buying things for themselves. People are getting married, you know, obviously plans for the future, obviously plans to go forward. I don't think anybody gets married and want to die the next day. Okay? So, I think a lot of people think that in the end times, the last times there will be uh, this desert-like world that they're in, in, and they're ready to die. But Jesus Christ didn't say that. It, it, I'm going to read it again. Matthew 24, 27 through 28. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be himself. Jesus ref, uh, speaking of himself. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. So you see, 
there was no desert world before the end of the world. People were getting mad the first time. They were getting married. They were eating. They were drinking. Jesus Christ said, this is just how it's going to be when he comes. He said that. So get away from this whole Armageddon movie, American movie, Armageddon perspective. Jesus Christ says when he comes, people will be giving into marriage. People will be eating and drinking. They, they will be basically going about life with plans of life. It shows us right here. So the whole desert Armageddon kind of world that you've been seeing on TV where everything is falling apart and skylines are falling apart and all of that. Jesus Christ said the day the son of man himself, speaking of himself, shall come, people will be getting married, eating and drinking and, in, and basically, in essence, enjoying their lives and going about plans for their lives. OK. So, so it's no, so you, so there's, there's not, there's not a perfect time. There's not going to be some perfect time that the world ends when you're ready to die. There's not going to be some, okay, some okay from the humanity say, well, we're ready, all ready to die. We're ready now. Everything's falling apart. Now it's the perfect time for the world to end. It's not going to be like that. Jesus Christ made it clear. He said people are going to be getting married. People are going to be eating and treating them, basically treat, enjoying their lives. Modern day term, they're going to be treating themselves, eating and drinking, ordering pizza, ordering food, ordering things, enjoying life. It's not going to be, okay, we're ready to die as humanity. The end of the world can come now. It's not going to be like that. He made it clear. So I'm trying to show you the difference between fiction and the reality of what Jesus Christ said himself, that all of the, everybody's going to be getting married, eating and drinking. That's what's going on now. It's not going to be, oh, oh, oh. Where we're all ready to die, just die. Let's just, you know, fall on us. You know, it's not, it's not going to, you know, it, you're going to, everybody's, people are going to be doing what they've always been doing. They're going to be doing, you know, making plans for the future. Marriage is, is obviously in itself a plans for the future, plans to go forward, plans to live out your life with someone else. That's what they're going to be doing. When it's time for the world to end. So your plans obviously are going to be irrelevant to what needs to happen. And you and, and people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that their plans don't matter. <laughs> your marriage don't matter. Your boo don't matter. How you enjoying your life and eating and doing and, 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 and enjoying the good foods that you like to eat. None of that matters. That you finally get to eat the food that you want to eat. This is more important than humanity. That's what you got to understand. Humanity is not more important than the kingdom of God. You're not more important. If you were, then the end of the world would not come. When it's supposed to, because you are advancing, getting married and doing things, you have plans. So some people are going to be like, hold up, well, wait, well, wait, well, hold up. I want to do this and I want to do that. Unfortunately, this is not your world, your universe. And that's another thing I need to touch on. This is not your universe. If you want, you want to live forever somewhere else, then you got to come out of God's universe. You got to come out of God's universe and, and go somewhere else. Because you felt a lot of these Americans feel that because evil, it talks about evil in the last days, it talks about the evil, that you think that you're going to triumph. 
and that you're just going to rule. Unfortunately, you're not going to stop God's overall plans. And that's and that's where people are arrogant. You're not going to stop his plans. So another thing I like to point out, too, is that Noah was the only one in his family saved. Everybody else was given into marriage, eating and drinking. They were not saved. <laughs> the flood came. They were eating and drinking and giving into marriage. And they were not saved. They were not saved. So while they were so when the flood came, all that eating and drinking and marrying, all of that died. So Noah and his family was the only one saved. So see, because what a lot of people think is because of all the numbers that there are out here, all these people, that it's impossible for all of us to, to die and God's people uh, survive. Well, it happened with Noah. If you really believe the Bible, if you, it happened with Noah, he was the only, him and his family and everyone else, all those numbers all the strength of the cities and the towns, all of that died. God has done that before. There is no security in numbers of people. I'm going to say that again. There is no security in numbers of people. You can have millions and millions and millions of people. And there is not absolutely when it comes to God's judgment and what God wants to do, there is no security in that. You can have billions of people. When the flood came, the world ended the first time. There was, multi, I'm sure there was hundreds of thousands of people, millions even. And those numbers were not able to withstand the judgment of God. And they did not prevail. And yet God's, God's man, Noah, did survive. Because, see, all these people out here in America, they'll think, it's, well, there's no way we can we can all die. It happened before. It happened in the days of Noah. They all died. They all, there was nobody alive. But Noah, but God's people. It can happen like that again. Just God's people. And every all these numbers they boast of, that they, that they have security in, all perish. All that perishes. So it's been done before. That's what I'm my point I'm making. For people that think it can't be done, it's been done before. One man, his family, and everybody else died. One man, his family, and everyone else dies. One man, his family, lives, and everyone else dies. God has done it like that before. So why you think, oh, I'm too beautiful to die. I'm too, I'm too prosperous. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm too this, I'm too that. It's no way. I'm too talented. I, I have too many goals and gifts. My marriage is too beautiful. My marriage is too beautiful. I'm, just, I'm coming on to my 10th anniversary. There's going to be people crying and wailing like that. I'm just, how can this be? Uh, my, my life has just begun. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure there was young women, young men that just got married in the in the times of the floods. But that was not enough for them to survive. You have to understand the priorities of the kingdom of God. <laughs> and God king God's kingdom is not some side piece kingdom that you can respect on Sunday. And, and, and disrespect all week long. You can't disrespect this kingdom. It is things. It is things that you can do with your free will. This is another thing I need to point out. There is things you can do with your free will. As a community, as a government, as a nation, that can cause pre premature judgments to come on your country. Yeah, you have free will. And that free will can bring about evil on you. 
That free will can bring evil on you. You do the wrong thing. That's what you got. It's not a game, man. Everybody loves to say that term, but they don't apply it to where the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God is not nothing to be played with, man. The kingdom of God will not be challenged at all. I don't know what you thought. But this is this kingdom will not be challenged. We're not going to be challenged. And as you can see, America is suffering for challenging God's kingdom. And that's not something necessarily God wanted to do. But we, as you, but if you look in the Bible, listen to this carefully. If you look in the Bible, people did certain things individually or as a nation, and God responded with judgment. And it, 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 they they brought it on themselves. In other words, they brought it on themselves. Yeah, that's the God that is real. That is that I serve. You can't just do anything and say, well, God's just going to allow that or nothing's going to happen. Unfortunately, if you play with God's true people, something is going to happen. I can't speak for these, you know, I can't speak for anyone, honestly, but me. I can vouch for people that's in my family or people that I befriended that are true Christians. But as a nation, I cannot speak for you being God's people. So the people that you've been challenging, in other words, who knows if they're even Christians? So in other words, once again, you may have been challenging people that ain't even Christians and you look at their life and say, well, we did it to that Christian. We could do it to someone else. How you know they was a Christian? So then in, in other words, three times, you don't you you think you've you've already seen what happens when somebody plays with a Christian. You think you already seen what happens. But yet you don't even know if these Americans are really Christians. They're not they're not they're not going by the Bible. I'm talking about what's in your heart. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm talking about the principles that's in your heart. What's good and what's bad. That right there. OK, because there's no you can go in the Bible and look again. There's no perfect prophets. There's no perfect any. any there's no perfect service of God. You should you should know that. If you're if you're if you're above 30 years old, you should know there's no perfect human beings. Nobody should have to point that out. That's your simple perspective of Christians. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> if you think Christians are perfect, you a simple person. You're a simple person. You're a simple person that has not lived long enough or doesn't know what life consists of. If you have lived long enough. It's some people that simply have never been Christians. So what you've seen happen to them, you apply it to your perspective of what you can do to a Christian. Now, now you meet a real Christian and you got destruction. It's not a game. That little goofy, that little goofy, I'm on the dark side stuff, it, it, it get, gets washed up. People, they want to be on the dark side, okay. There's, there's, there's a price to pay on every, with everything. You want to ride with that? It's a price to pay. Yeah, you have a real enemy. <laughs> you want to be on the dark side? There's a, you have a, you don't get to just walk around. There's nobody that gets to do that. You have a force that's fighting you. I have a force that's fighting me. If you choose to be on the dark side, God is your enemy. I'm, t I'm telling it like it is. I, I, like a lot of you American Christians, are you, you, you know, you look at these witches and warlocks, you look at these people and you want to say, oh, well, God can save anybody. True enough, God can save anyone. But presently in the state that they are in, as a, as a witch or a warlock or any type of divination that they're practicing, they are enemies of God presently. 
Now, can they be saved? Yes. But presently, they are enemies of God and they will suffer as enemies of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, see, American Christianity teaches, oh, well, you know, God is just trying to love everybody and, and, and we should just love everybody. The Bible says, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says to, to be friend, just a friend of the world is to be an enemy, is, is hostility and to be as an enemy to God. Okay? To be a friend of the world is to be basically an enemy, to be, it's, it's enmity with God. The actual word to use is enmity. To be a friend of the world is to be enmity with God. They're not on God's side. They're not, in and, and American Christians and preachers, you, uh, you, yeah, you walk in love, but love is not the only perspective, the only element in the universe. I got to keep it 100. There, the on, love is not the only element in the world. There's other things that happens. There's other things that people are. There's other things that uh, consist in the world. And love is not what um, is given to those things. So if you're a wicked person and a witch and a warlock, the Bible says it makes it clear. Suffer not a witch to live. That's what it says. It says, suffer not a witch to live. That's what the Bible says. So all the love that the Christian evangelists talk about, the Bible says a witch should be dead. Why are you trying to evangelize? See, the American Christian wants to go around and get everybody saved. The Bible doesn't say everyone will be saved. It doesn't say that. It does not make, it does not give us an indication that people will be saved. Everybody will be saved. And so this, 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 um, this out of a uh, whack evangelistic perspective is like, it allows enemies of God in, in America to go unchallenged, to go, um, unchallenged. Number one, you ain't telling them nothing about what they should be knowing. You ain't telling them the truth. Like Jesus did, and, and 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 you and you don't think that they're supposed to be fought. You don't think that God will fight them and bring judgment. You think that oh well they'll be saved one day. In essence, that's all you're thinking about <laughs> that they'll be saved one day, and maybe because you want to grow a big congregation, you that's why you're doing it. We'll get them all saved. Get them. We'll get a big church and get them all saved. And we'll have a big church as a result. <laughs> well, buddy, unfortunately, everybody's not going to be a part of your, com your congregation. Ever, 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 ever. There's some people that are, some would say, born to oppose the kingdom of God. Some people would say, some people are born, it's their fate to be evil. I mean, look at Hitler. It's, it's a tricky situation when you look at people that that evil, you know, what, what, what did they even have a choice in the matter? And, and we know every man has free will. But let's put it like this to be definitely accurate. Satan has his own people and he has a hold on them that you wouldn't believe. Oh, you think that, oh, you're just going to, there's people, you're just going to save them because you come to them. I mean, most American Christians, in my opinion, are not even empowered enough, with, don't have enough spiritual power to break the spiritual power that these people have dedicated themselves to. You, 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 you no, they, they're dedicated to that. And in fact, there's generations of witches and warlocks. There's some people who come from generations and generations of witches and warlocks. Generations. And you think you're just going to, I mean, come on, man. 
You got to be realistic. Be realistic with your evangelistic ways. Okay? Because what Jesus Christ said himself were that people in the last days before he came back will be eating and drinking and giving into marriage. He didn't say they would be getting saved. He said they would be going about their worldly lives, basically. They would be going about their worldly lives. And I'm paraphrasing when I say that. Describing it. And they and they will be they, they will and, and they won't it didn't say anything about them being Christians. It didn't say anything about that. It said that they would be going about their everyday life. So if Jesus Christ said that, you have to keep that in reality's perspective. You have to. You're not, you can't make this up how you want it to be. You can't make up America the way, the way you want America to be. And how your interaction is going to be. And the success of your interaction. Jesus Christ said people will be drinking, eating, and giving in to marriage. That's what he said. You can't change that if Jesus said it. And you need to understand the difference between evangelizing and getting people saved or bringing people to God and that they, they, and that they are saved through Christ Jesus. You got to understand the difference between that and, and you think every, and just you, you and you don't you think everybody's just going to be saved and you don't think there's no dedicated enemies that part that are against the kingdom of God directly against the kingdom of God. You're not accepting the whole reality of this war that we're in. And, and for Christians to sit up and talk about, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Let me help you understand something. David fought against flesh and blood. In, in fact, he fought against his own son. He had war against his, with his own son. Okay, when the people of God was fighting against Pharaoh with Moses, and they was and they was and they and, the, and, and, and they were chasing and pursuing the people of God before the Red Sea. What were they fighting against? They were fighting against Pharaoh's army. When the, when the people of God was circling around the, the walls of Jericho, and the walls fell, I can go on and on. Um, Samson, what's, what was Samson doing when he had the jawbone of the donkey and he slayed all those men? Samson literally killed men. I'm trying to show you the history of the kingdom of God. I'm showing you the history of the kingdom of God. What did Samson do? For women to be singing his praises. Women were singing Samson's praises. Why were they doing that? Because he killed many men. Many men he killed. So you're misinterpreting we fight not against flesh and blood when, the, when there's a whole history of the kingdom of God fighting against flesh and blood. And you can't tell a military person that. What sense does that make? I'm talking about someone that actually is in the, any military that defends you so they supposed to fight against flesh and blood, but you don't. You're supposed to be all in the government and the military and everywhere. If it's right. If it's a nation of God. So how would you, so if it's a nation of God, how would you, how would you fight according to that misinterpretation? If we're a nation of God with a military and the military is submitted to the word of God, but they get submitted to uh, an, uh, uh, an American Christian's interpretation of we fight not against flesh and blood, meaning we don't fight against some humans. Then what would the military that serves God do? What would they do? You see how I'm, well, you see what I'm saying? It sounds, it makes you seem like a very nice and sweet person when you say we don't fight against flesh and blood, but it doesn't make sense. When you look at the Bible, the Bible shows us history of God's people fighting flesh and blood humans. The problem, the main problem is, is everybody don't want to put it all together. 
That's the problem with American Christianity. You don't want to put all of the word of God together for everybody to live by. I'm talking about all of it. You don't want to do that. That's the whole problem with American Christians. That's the problem with the preaching. <laughs> That's the part with the preaching. You ain't putting it all together, partner. No disrespect to the man of God or the woman of God. You got to put it all together. You got to put this all together. You can't be half preaching. <laughs> Say that again. You cannot be half preaching. Because it, and so when it says we fight not against flesh and blood, but it, and it, it names all the different uh, enemies. What is it? What is showing us the right interpretation of that is what is showing us is that this is really our enemy. This is the one who is who we're really fighting against Satan and his kingdom. It is the foundational enemy. In other words, however, Human beings can join that foundational enemy. And then we have no choice but to destroy humanity that have decided to join Satan's kingdom. There are people that really do join his kingdom. And they can't just be walking around. Nah, buddy, we got to handle that. And we don't have to do it physically. That If you're high ranking, you don't have to do it like that. But if you were submitted to the kingdom of God as a government and as a military, then the wicked would have to die. That's why you see in some other countries, even though they're off, you see that they apply other religions to their government. And based on that religion that is, a, that is implied and insinuated in their government's principles, people are put to death. According to according to the, the, their religious principles, 